Welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2023 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Strife, the Founder and Festival Director, in conversation with Marianne Garger, the producer of the short documentary, The Orchestra That Chuck Built. You can see that uh, playing with Marching Forward as part of our in-person and virtual screening programs. All the information about those programs can be found at peacefilmfest.org. Now, let's welcome Marianne to the conversation. So good to see you. Hi, everybody. Hi, Marianne. It is great to have you with us. And thank you for sharing your wonderful short film and inspiring short film, the orchestra that Chuck built with with the Global Peace Film Festival. So let's start out. Tell us a little bit about the film. Well, this was really a labor of love. Um, we made it, um, you know, in 2022 through to 2023. Um, I have been involved in the organization for about three or four years and had met Chuck and I always wanted to um, showcase and raise awareness for the work that Iceola is doing. Um, and so I'm so grateful we had the opportunity to actually get this project off the ground and and um, and and focus and showcase the work of Iceola and the incredible work of its founder and conductor, Chuck Dickerson. Well, this is a terrific portrait of, of Chuck and his work and all of the kids uh, who take part in this. Um, you say you've been involved with the organization for um, a while, but how did you come to find out about it? And what made you decide a short documentary would be you know, a great fit? Well, um, this is not my first short. I did a short um, in 2020. Um, an animated short, 12 minutes. And um, we um, had a score in that short and I really wanted kids involved. Um, it's a short that has to do with gun safety in schools. And um, so I really had my heart set on having the orchestra that is scoring the piece to be an orchestra of children. And um, for reasons I won't bore you with, our other orchestra fell out and I needed a kid's orchestra immediately and made a very panicked phone call um, to Iceola um, uh, three years ago, um, asking if they would be interested in learning um, a public domain piece of music called Beautiful Dreamer and record it. And um, thankfully they were excited um, about joining the project and recording the piece of music and their their um, organizational values were in alignment with um, uh, you know supporting um, gun safety in schools so we really hit it off they recorded it in a very um, last minute manner but it came together and um, and that short went on to win the Oscar and it was at the Oscar party. I turned to Chuck and I said, you're next. <laughs> so he he didn't really realize what uh, saying no to you or saying yes to you was going to lead to. <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> that was a fantastic story about uh, almost feels like destiny then, you know. It does feel like destiny. It, it really does. It was meant to be. And we've been really good friends ever since. And, and also with the kids. So when you, you know, started to dig into telling his story, you know, um, were there, were there any things that surprised you about this, you know, about discovering his story, digging into it? Yeah, a few things, actually. I didn't know that. Um, I just assumed he had always made his living in music and doing musical things. That was not the case. I I did not know he was a lawyer and a city attorney for um uh for Los Angeles. Um and you know just knowing that this work that he was doing with Iceola was just for the passion of it just made it even that much more incredible. 
And um, I didn't realize the history that Chuck had with Compton and living in Los Angeles and growing up in Los Angeles in um, a period of unrest in the 60s. And, you know, there's a little backstory um, that Chuck tells in the movie. And um, a lot of that I was not aware of. Well, you did a great job of, of weaving all of that together and and also capturing the the young people and um, you know their participation. Um, you know, can you talk a bit more about you know just what it means to a community like Compton? Because I think if people haven't seen the film yet, although I do recommend everyone searches this film out, <laughs> not only at the festival but in other opportunities, for people who haven't seen it, can you explain a little bit about What's so significant about Chuck reaching back into Compton? Well, you know, I, I, the more that um, we started on this piece, the more information that we learned. And, you know, there's a statistic that Chuck was telling us, which is out of all of the American instrumentalists and orchestras and U.S. orchestras, only 1.8% are, um, are Black. And, um which was a bit of a shocking statistic. And um, and so, you know, the work that Chuck's doing is meaningful because he's giving opportunity to people who may not otherwise be able to afford instruments or music lessons or be exposed to even having a career um, in, in um, you know, uh, as an instrumentalist, whether it be in orchestras or, um, session musicians. Um, so it really was a problem that, um, that I wasn't aware of. And I love making movies that matter. And, um, this seemed like the perfect, um, subject to, to highlight for me. Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, and I want to, uh, underline a phrase you just used, making films that matter. That was one of the reasons why I was so attracted to programming this film, because the oh. central mission of the festival, um, you know, is is while we do certainly want to show our audiences well-made, entertaining films, more than anything, we feel like our work starts after the film has uh, has finished and oh, people sit up in their, their chairs and say, what can I do? Yes. And so, you know, that's what was so uh, inspiring about your film. And so if you could just speak to, you know, what you, you know, what you would hope the intentionality about what you just said, making films that matter. Well, I really, I mean, our goal, the, the director, Christopher Stout, um, my fellow producers and myself, I think, um, you know, we, we, again, a movie that matters, we want to start dialogue around issues um, that, that, um, you know, that deserve having that discussion. And so this was one of those, this was one of those issues for us. And it was really surprising because, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Chuck said, okay, the new numbers are in. The League of American Orchestras have updated all of their research on the 1.8%. And um, I'm thinking, oh, it's changed. We're going up, we're going up. And it's the same since 2016. So, um, but but for me, really, it's about highlighting this issue. And my hope and North Star would be we have discussions around this issue and that we find ways of helping one another. Um, you know, be a part if it's a if it's an inner city youth wanting to be a part of an orchestra and be a part of that family. Um, you know, I think that that's what's um, really great about what the movie showcases and, and the incredible work of Isiola. So I want to just, first of all, um, you've been mentioning Isiola a lot, which is the Inner City Youth Orchestra of Los Angeles, correct? Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> just, so, just so people watching this knows uh, uh, about that amazing organization. And so, what can people watching this uh, or coming to see the film uh, do to help the work of Isiola, of, of Chuck, um, and of you as the filmmakers? Well, there at the end of our film, 
um, you know, there is a call to action to visit uh, www.iciola.com, I-C-Y-O-L-A.com. And, uh, you know, that support could be in many different ways. It could be um, a financial contribution. There are 501c3. Um, any support goes to paying for music lessons and instruments. I've do donated instruments to Iceola um, that that I've had. Um, you know, that's just one way. Uh, so, you know, if you're in the LA area, of course, going to their concerts and their performances um, um, is another way. Um, and just reaching out to Chuck. He, if, if, if it's, it doesn't have to be financial support, it could be um, support in other ways in terms of opportunities or even just, um, you know, helping to do whatever work may be needed at the time. So there's, there's many different ways, but I would say go to the website and reach out to Iceola directly. And what's next for you? <laughs> well, I, um, I'm starting, I've already started my next short. I'm always doing a short, always. Um, so I have, I'm um, started my next short, which is an animated short. Um, and then um, I'm starting um, another feature in the fall. Ah, well, Marianne, we will definitely stay in touch after the festival because we love to update our Global Peace Film Festival followers via our social media channels about any updates uh, regarding our filmmakers because we love to support not just this work, but all of your work. So we'll stay in touch and thank you so much for the insight behind the orchestra that Chuck built. Please go to the orchestra that Chuck built com to find out more information about the film and the filmmakers. But also please consider going to www.icyola.com to check out the Iceola organization, which does such tremendous work. And don't forget to go to peacefilmfest.org to find out where you can see the orchestra that Chuck built uh, playing with Marching Forward as a part of our in-person and virtual programming. Again, the in-person programming begins September 19th and runs through September 23rd. Our virtual programming begins September 25th and ends October the 1st. Thank you all so much for watching today's conversation and we'll see you at the next Globe.